Welcome back YouTubers to my channel of an everyday life of an ASB. If you're following me right now, I'm ASB and I welcome you all with open arms as well as the newbies that I has just landed on my page for whatever reason it may be. I talk about obviously about my journey with Asperger's syndrome, OCD and the like along with also just the normal everyday norms of your general health versus your mental health along with tips and advice along the way as well as hopefully just giving you guys some message of hope regardless where it may be so it has been brought to my attention right now that i'm trying to bring out more of the autism and and also the other ones based on the narcissist and sociopathic series which is coming of late due to my research and findings so before i for forget as a disclaimer as always i'm no medical doctor i'm just an everyday joe vlogs sharing my life stories versus my life experiences and training in the area that i'm in and hopefully that along the way that you can come on this journey and actually understand where i stand on the spectrum or wherever it may be so this one's obviously a clarification basically to is if you see any warning signs and symptoms from the previous videos that I've shared with you all, seek professional help for yourself or your loved one, or seek an advice for yourself or your loved one. So this one's obviously going to be hopefully in the next few series over, or the main series, to try and tidy up those bits before I hopefully get into the mental health, Mr. Gritty stuff as well. Is that basically, at this point of time, I would like to try and share some of the topics that's close to my heart regardless what they are you know I feel they need to be addressed so if I don't address them who else will write even though I'm probably the only one that's talking about this stronghold of certain important topics that are close to my heart so this one's going to be called breaking into two parts for the autism and pets or pet therapy especially this one's the first part autism pets obviously part one more evidence of social benefits obviously as we know basically no one size fits all solution researchers has emphasized that there is a need to consider the child's sensitivities and fundamentally dynamics when it comes to getting a form of a pet for a companion or whatever reason for their you know jurisdiction of what they want for their child regardless what it may be so in the year of 2013 or 14, a new study has uh, had an argument that been made that has lended a bit of support to the idea that interacting with a pet will benefit many children with autism and without autism. However, the author emphasises the need to consider each child's sensitivities as well as the family dynamics and carefully considering pet ownership of any kind regardless if it's a horse, guinea pig, dog, cat or what have you. The study published in the Journal of Pediatric Musings surveyed parents of children who had autism about the children's interaction with dogs as a clear example. Nearly two thirds of the families owned a dog. Of these, 94% said that their child bonded strongly with their pet. Even in the families without dogs too, however, 7 in 10 parents said their child enjoyed interacting with dogs. In some previous research involving children with autism, however, found that those who had a family pet from a young age tended to have greater social skills. Still other research has shown other, you know, social behaviours in children who had autism temporarily improve after even a short play period with a live animal such as a guinea pig versus a toy. And obviously, I know I shouldn't say this, a number of Autism Speaks community grants have supported successful equine therapy programs for children with autism and I'm sure there are other company group groups support networks do some of these sort of therapies like here in New Zealand we've got writing for disabled and some other therapeutic kind of organizations that I can't think of on the top of the head but that one's sticking out like a sore thumb for me to recall what we've got in New Zealand in a way of therapy for people with autism and other you know specialized needs Children with autism may especially benefit from interacting with dogs, which can provide unconditional, non judgmental love and companionship for life, says the new studies author Gretchen Carlyle. Dr. Carlyle obviously is a research fellow with the Research Centre for Human Animal Interaction at the University of Missouri College of Veterinary Medicine. The need for 
equally with full consideration, parents should consider their children's sensitivities carefully when choosing a pet to ensure a good match for you and the child. Dr. Taylor really emphasizes this point. Bringing a dog into any family is a big step, but for families of children with autism, getting a dog should be a decision that's taken very seriously. She says, for example, a child who is easily agitated or has sensitivities to noise may have great difficulty with an extremely active dog or one that tends to bark a lot. Although her study addressed dog ownership, Dr. Carlisle emphasizes that other pets may be best suited for ch particular children and families, depending on, again, the needs of the child and, obviously, how the child will interact with that. Well, this quickly ends short and brief about the autism and pets part one. Give me the like for a thumbs up, comment below, follow me on my social medias listed below. Feel free to share these videos around to family and friends. Feel free to also private message me for any questions, what have you, through here or on Facebook as the answers all. Feel free to turn on the notification bell so that you are ready to know when my new research material is out and about. So not for the day guys, thanks for your support, thanks for watching, do what you love, love what I do, until next time, SB signing out and I'll see you again soon. Although